Hello, welcome to another Writerly Witterings. And today, because it's a Sunday, I'm not talking about pens and reviews and so on. I'm talking about books. Now, just recently on the internet, there's been an awful lot of um, Twitter messages and other things saying which books most influenced you or which authors most influenced you. And that's quite difficult because I can think of Agatha Christie, Sherlock Holmes with Arthur Conan Doyle. I've got a huge number of writers who influenced me as a crime writer. But when I started thinking about it a bit more deeply, I suppose more than crime writers, the people who have influenced me have been much more historical writers. And especially good quality historical writers who do some research. And while thinking about it, I thought... There's only one guy I can really talk about as being a, a big influence on me, and that's George MacDonald Fraser. Anybody from the 60s will have heard of Flashman. Flashman was a brilliant invention of MacDonald Fraser. He was the character from Tom Brown's school, book, school days, who was a drunk, a bully, a coward, a lecher, just about everything you can possibly imagine. And the books themselves um, follow the career of Flashman. He started out in Tom Brown's school days as the epitome of everything that was horrible. Bullying and treating younger school kids with contempt. Um, and Flashman carried on after being expelled from rugby school at the back end of the book with Tom Brown as the little angelic character this starts off with him saying, well, it's not true anyway. I wasn't that beastly drunk. It was another bloke. And this follows the career of Flashman immediately after school when he went to join the cherry pickers, the Hazars, and ended up in Lord Cardigan's 11th Light Dragoons. And because of that, he had to go to India, the first Afghan war, and ended up at the Charge of the Light Brigade. There we are, Flashman at the Charge, Charge of the Light Brigade. And the great thing is that these books follow him all the way through the 1800s. And they're, they're cleverly done because they're all taken from the point of view of... I will read you a little bit of the explanatory note. The great mass of manuscript known as the Flashman Papers was discovered during a sale of household furniture at Ashby, Leicestershire in 1965. The papers were subsequently claimed by Mr Paget Morrison of Durban, South Africa, the nearest known living relative of their author. A clear point of major literary interest about the papers is that they clearly identify Flashman, the school bully of Tom Hughes's Tom Brown's school days, with the celebrated Victorian soldier of the same name. The papers are, in fact, Harry Flashman's personal memoirs from the day of his expulsion from rugby in the late 1830s to the early days of the present century. He appears to have written them sometime between 1900 and 1905 when he must have been over 80. It's possible that he dictated them. And it goes on to say that the family wanted to keep them hidden because they showed what an arrant coward, horrible, bullying, womanising rake he was. But George MacDonald Fraser peppered each of his stories with notes. And they're extensive. i give you an example here. That's the beginning of the notes. And they go on and on and on for pages and pages. Not because he was a boring person, but because all of his books are based on fact. When he speaks about the slave trade, he's done his research. When he talks about the Battle of Balaclava, he's done his research. The First Afghan War, he knows what he's talking about. And he gives you the bibliography so you can go back and check where he's mentioned these things happened. He gives you the diaries of the people who were there. But he didn't just write imaginary humour. He wrote other humour too. So I'm not too sure of these. I think The General Danced at Dawn was the first of this trilogy, but then I think he's pronounced McCollin. I'm not sure. McCoslin, McCollin, McCallan. But um, these three are short stories based on MacDonald Fraser's life 
as a soldier at the back end of the Second World War, and it's about this particular private who was always in, always messy, always late, always scruffy, always tatty. Pretty much the typical British soldier, really, of the time. And these are hilarious. I can thoroughly recommend them. But he also, George MacDonald Fraser, did a number of other books. He was well known for writing film scripts. And in fact, I believe Octopussy was written by him. In fact, he covered pretty much the whole spectrum of writing. He was a journalist for almost all his working life. He came to writing moderately late, I think. I say the first of the Flashman books came out in 65 or so. But he carried on working till his death. He was a very hard-working writer. But not only was he a writer, he was also fascinated by history, pure and simple. And being a man from the borders, he took his history seriously, because history there in the Scottish-English borders was bloody and serious. One of the books that he wrote was this. The Steel Bonnets, which is said to be the story of the Anglo-Scottish border reavers. A splendid book, scholarly and readable, accurate and true, by Hugh Trevor Roper. If Jesus Christ was amongst them, they would deceive him, it was said of the border reavers. The rustlers, outlaws and gangsters who terrorised the Anglo-Scottish frontier of 400 years ago. It says there is an almost forgotten chapter of British history, preserved largely in folk tales and ballads. The story of the great raiding families, the Armstrongs, the Elliots, the Grahams, the Johnstons, the Maxwells, the Scots, the Kerrs, the Nixons and others. Basically, for a hundred odd years, all too common were little raids where tribes of Scots or Brits would trespass over the border, go to one of the people on the other side and just murder, rape and steal everything they could. It went on for a hundred years and eventually it took some really brutal suppression to get things back into order. And... I mentioned that. It is a very interesting read. I loved this book when I read it. But it is a serious history book. It's full of a great deal of careful research. So it's not going to be for everyone. But if you want to get a flavour for it, George MacDonald Fraser wrote a brief radio play called The Candlemas Road. And this is enormously readable. It's a novelisation of the script that he wrote. It's not very long. It's only, what is it, 170 odd pages. But this is an example of what life was like. The treachery, the cruelty, the brutality, the way that the people were treated across both sides of the border. If you haven't read any George MacDonald Fraser and you like history, this is a book you really ought to read. It is not light. It's not humorous like the Flashman books or the McCullum books, but it is fantastic. And if you want to get into George MacDonald Fraser for light reading, yes, these are full of history. Yes, they're ac absolutely accurate, but they're hilarious. They are romps. They're delightful. If you want something that's more serious, Candlemas Road. And there is one last book I have to mention. Now, this one has suffered. Ooh, how it has suffered. Um, this is, in fact, the third version of this book I've bought. I bought it first in hardback. I bought a second copy in paperback because someone stole my hardback. And since that one's long disappeared, I had to buy this. And I got it second hand, so the spine's ruined, the cover's coming off. But I just this is one of those books I have to have with me because it is the best description of the last of the great armies for the British Empire, I think. Quartered safe out here, taken from um, a line in a Rudyard Kipling poem about soldiering. 
And George MacDonald Fraser in this talks about his life in the Burma campaign. He joined up late in the Second World War and he was sent out to what was always thought of as the Forgotten Army. In the Burma campaign they were fighting against the Japanese trying to kick them back from pretty much the borders of India along the uh, battlefront to try to recover the British Imperial uh, areas out there. So he was with, let's see, he is in nine section, a small group of hard-bitten and to modernise possibly eccentric Cumbrian borderers with whom the author, then 19, served in the last great land campaign of World War II in the 17th Black Cat Division. They captured a vital strong point deep in Japanese territory, held it against counter-attack and spearheaded the final assault in which the Japanese armies were, to quote General Slim, torn apart. It's unforgettable once you've read it. This is the story of a real soldier who saw action, who saw his friends dying around him, but who was a brilliant writer. And so he can give you the the real gut-wrenching horrors of it, as well as giving you all the humour and the British Army piss-taking and how soldiers behaved under battle, how they behaved when they were having some downtime. There is no book better at giving you the atmosphere of warfare, I don't think. In fact, this is such an inspirational book, I based most of my trilogy, my Band of Brothers trilogy, um, called the Vintner series, which are Fields of Glory, Blood on the Sand, Blood of the Innocents. I base much of the characters in those three books on the characters in this. Real people, real soldiers living real lives, lives of danger, although most of their time was basically boredom. But this gives you a feel for what it was like to be out there. So there you go. That is my first little section on writers who have inspired me. And not just writers who have inspired me, but writers who have given me a huge amount of pleasure over the years and who have shown me how you can write good history books with notes which will make people want to hopefully go and find out more about their history. Because that's one thing that I keep getting from people who read my books is they say immediately they've put the book down they want to go and find out more about that period well it's because of George MacDonald Fraser I did that so if you've read my books and you like them try these you'll find they're superbly well written they're written by someone who had a real pleasure in the English language but who also loved history and who could describe it superbly well so I hope that was interesting thanks very much for watching um, now I anticipate there should be something up there leading you to previous videos and something there to subscribe. So please subscribe, like this video if you did enjoy it because um, this is a bit of a, a digression for me with this channel. But I do think that a lot of people are interested in what books writers read so I thought it would be worthwhile doing it. So let me know if you enjoyed this. I will hopefully be bringing out another one of these every Sunday evening. and. Like it, comment it, share it, and thanks very much for watching, and I think that's all I've got to say. Now I've got to go and make myself a cup of tea, because as you will notice, I failed in the tea brewing stakes today. Thanks a lot, see you soon. Take care. <laughs>